change are based on where you are sitting. If this is an issue, I do want you to tell me that would make life easier for everybody. They can attend this waypoint. Okay. 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 Okay.
Kiddos, once you're done with that survey, yeah. go ahead and get logged into the game kit, please. People, I'll try to wrap it up in the next, like, two minutes, please.
Johnny. Whoa, we're good. Hey, thank you. All right, good. Uh, I'm like right now working on your uh, singing chart, so if you would please, please, please have your name sent out, because like I said, I'm still uh, learning names, and it makes it easier to build this thing out real quick. So go ahead and get that out, and then here you two go, we're on part six. But before we do that, a couple of quick reminders. All right, people. So uh, we're going to keep going on our island of personality. Uh, you already did your survey. You already did the gym kit. This is your reminder about the syllabus. So uh, I meant to get those in quick before I left on Friday, but I only got two period stuff. So uh, periods one and two have the opportunity to get it turned in, and then more than that, you're going to impact your grade. Uh, if you don't have it, don't trip. You'll all still accept it. You'll just have a missing assignment after today until you can submit it. Okay? Uh, Islands personality, we're jumping back in with that. So reminder on our objective, what's in black, I will read. What is in red, you will read. Okay? So this will be able to collaborate on and Island of personality. For the group by creating a Island presentation. At a proficient level per the rubric. Beautiful. When I say a proficient level, I mean a three out of four. I grade almost everything on a four point scale. Okay? Four is advanced, three is proficient, two is basic understanding, and a one is not passing. You need to fix it and resubmit it. Okay? Because the goal, of course, is learning. All right? All right. So it looks like y'all were on part six. Essential question, reminder, we're working on the identity, the personality of your group.
how common it is and then, you know, how it happens, what are the mental illnesses you would be concerned with. First off, uh, the definition of mental illness, I think this is your first question. Mental illness is disorders that disrupt thinking, feelings, or moods that cause impaired functioning of daily living. So some people can experience things like anxiety and be sad, but not necessarily have a mental illness, right? That kind of comes and goes with everyday life, but people struggling with mental illnesses um, uh, lose function from it. And what that means is it's hard for them to function in everyday society. They might have an anxiety disorder, they might have depression or something. And so it's very difficult for them to, uh, to get by. So that's the main thing is it changes these things so where it's hard for you to get by daily daily living. Okay, that's the point of mental illness is. Now, approximately about 20% of uh, Americans and even in your age range, 18 year olds suffer from this. So one in five, okay? So I don't know, what are your questions? Do you think that's higher or not? But I don't know if you think that's a lot, but one in five, 20%, that's, that's quite a few, right? Could have any particular mental health condition. This can happen any time in your life, it can happen anyway, right? Now the big part of this is the main, a leading cause of disability worldwide for people 15 to 44. So meaning that they cause the most people to lose, miss schoolwork, to miss work, uh, to miss commitments and things like that. Um, these are more common than say illnesses are, like sickness, um, mental health issues, okay? And we see that sometimes in times of stress and things like that, they have increased a lot of stress and trauma on people that are constant. So, now this chart you see here is just uh, when they surveyed people, they found about 85% or 86% were overwhelmed. So, you know, in day life is stressful, everybody deals with things, sometimes are harder than others, right? So that can be overwhelming. We're going to talk about stress and how to deal with that. Um, about half of, the, half of the people felt hopeless at time to time. So, you know, there's sometimes where you can have a, a, rough, a rough time and feel sad or depressed and then you know, maybe that will last a little bit of time and kind of go away. But about 38% of those people would have depression affect them. And among that group, about 10% people might have considered suicide. About 7% would have hurt themselves. And about 2% would have attempted suicide. So here's one of the problems with things, a mental illness like depression, is that if I'm treated, if people aren't taking care of this or looking for help, then people can end up hurting themselves or injuring themselves or even trying to commit suicide, which is the downside. So once again, there's a risk for this if people are not treating themselves or getting help that they need. So one thing is uh, there's a stigma around mental illness. A lot of people suffer with it needlessly. They suffer with it without getting treatment. And there is lots of treatments available, but people have to reach out and get them, right? So a lot of people will just kind of try to think they can get through it or push themselves over it. But the fact is, sometimes it's a brain illness and you can't really get over it without assistance. And We'll talk about what those are, but there's therapies, there's medications, and things like that can help. However, once again, you will not help yourself or your or people you know unless you actually reach out for help. So people uh, do need to realize if you have issues, then there is resources available, okay? All right, so what is mental illness? Um, anybody want a volunteer definition of that, or should we just call somebody, or anybody, what do you think? Mental illness. Yeah. Yeah, disrupts thinking, feelings, moods, and behaviors. And what is a problem is it, um, it can interfere with everyday life, right? So some people, you know, sometimes are anxious, some people are sometimes are sad, but um, if you have it bad enough to where it interferes with your daily life, so it's hard to cope, it's hard to get by, then it's considered an illness. So once again, you have to be diagnosed by an illness by a doctor who's trained in it. So you can't just say, well, I'm depressed, I have depression. It's not how it works. You have to actually go and get diagnosed with it before you can treat it. So the first step would be, if you have an issue, is to get, is to get a diagnosis, is to see a doctor. Uh, they can uh, give you out to like, uh, give you help, right, or give you medication. But after that, um, what also helps is some kind of therapy. We have lots of, uh, lots of assistance here at school. We have lots of therapists available. So if you think you may be struggling with something, then, then reach out and get help. Uh, I think it, you, know, you don't have to struggle with things. Help. You can help yourself, right? Uh, you have to actually try these things to get better. So once again, um, some people struggle with it to an extent where they can't function day to day. Um, so in, for instance, if you have a lot of really bad depression, some people are really depressed, they don't want to get out of bed, they don't want to do anything, right? They have a lot of low energy, they're not motivated. Um, so it's really difficult for them to do that. Uh, it's more or less common than you think. So just that's a personal response. 
Um, one in five was the stat, 20%. Uh, so to me, that seems pretty common, right? That's a lot of people. If you think of this class, there's 30. One in five would be about six or seven people would struggle with this uh, sometime in their life or now. So there's, you know, there's students that have issues. If you have issues, then, then try to seek out help if you need it, okay? All right, let's go into the specific disorders. Uh, the first ones are anxiety disorders. Uh, this is the most common, they affect about 20% of uh, adults, also younger people. And so what are anxiety disorders, what are their causes? <clears throat> first off, anxiety disorders are caused by areas of the brain, and, and basically when you, um, your brain kind of overreacts or overstimulates, it gets into this fight or flight system. Um, and it's a reaction, it's like a, it's a protection mechanism, but it goes kind of haywire in people with anxiety. So the brains are always lit up, they're always thinking about stuff, they're worrying about stuff, um, excessive worry, uh, they interfere with their sleep, their daily lives, right? Um, they think sometimes about um, catastrophic things, maybe they think their health is suffering, so they may have issues with that, okay? Uh, here's all the different disorders, and we're going to watch a video describing these, so I need to get another major ones here. Let's go through that list of them. Uh, generalized anxiety, so these are all related because they're all the same spectrum of anxiety disorders. Generalized anxiety disorders, so some people, um, so you know, sometimes you can be nervous or anxious, but that kind of comes and goes away. People with generalized anxiety disorder kind of have it all the time. So they're anxious all the time, and it stays for a long period of time, like six months or longer. They're diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. So we have this, um, sometimes it can affect you know, your ability to function and stuff. And so some people uh, look for assistance in that. Um, related to that are some people who have anxiety, and some people don't, um, end up getting what they call panic attacks. And panic attacks is when you're you're out in public or somewhere and you get frightened about something or scared, your heart races, you feel like um, maybe you're having a heart attack or you're gonna die, or um, you're claustrophobic, um, you start to kind of hyperventilate, you know, things like that. So you're having this overwhelming sensation, we call it a panic attack, and so that's a feature. A lot of people with anxiety will get panic attacks from time to time, and those are things that can happen to them. Um, and it's a reaction to a certain stimuli or environment. Um, phobia or phobic disorders is an irrational fear of something. Um, phobias are like when you're scared of things like heights, spiders, snakes, you know, fear of being in closed spaces. Those are called phobias. So they usually have a term like arachnophobia or um, you know, there, there's a bunch of things. There's fears of all kinds of things. And they're usually caused by um, usually an exposure or a traumatic event associated with something that causes it. And so uh, that's a phobia. Social anxiety disorder, people with this typically don't like to be out in public. They don't like to leave their homes or their rooms. They don't want to be around a lot of people. That's just that some people are uncomfortable around people. That's not social anxiety disorder. When you have this, you really don't want to go outside. You want to just stay inside. You want to deal with people so they have, they have a problem. They have a, a real fear of that. Obsessive compulsive disorder, do rituals. Um, they may have an obsessive fear of things like germs. Um, they do repeated activities. Um, they may wash their hands hundreds of times a day because of the fear of getting infection or germs. Um, they may um, do repeated activities. They may, uh, there's people that, uh, you see these shows on TV where people like hoard things in their house. That's part of OCD. So they collect things or they have like 200 cats or something. Um, uh, they have a disorder related to that. So obsessive compulsive is just, they do rituals and things because they think that'll protect them from um, dangerous things that might happen. Um, and then there's PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. This can be caused by traumatic events. Typically these people have poor sleep or they have nightmares, um, they have flashbacks, trauma-based. Uh, people who saw traumatic events, very common in say like soldiers who go to war. Sometimes they see people die or they see people next to them die or they're exposed to death. Um, they can get this PTSD when they come back from war. And um, or if you've had a traumatic event, like you saw something like that, and it's, it, it just comes back, right? Um, and so there's various causes for these, we're going to get into these, but things certainly like biology, which is your, um, your what you have, your genetics, of course, uh, you know, what you inherited from your parents has a strong role. In fact, they found the parents, if you have a parent with, um, you know, depression or anxiety or something, there's, there's like a 50-50 chance you get it from the genes. Um, they go too, it's even higher. Um, environmental uh, cues, social, cultural role, roles, etc. So. Uh, I wanted to show you this video real quick. It's just uh, one of the animated things that I always kind of highlight uh, to, to demonstrate some of these things. Many of us have faced the 
are symptoms of anxiety, whether writing an exam or applying for a new job. But for some, this feeling is difficult to stop, even in seemingly normal situations, leaving a lasting effect on quality of life. So what's going on, and why are you so anxious? Close to 7 million people are affected by generalized anxiety disorder, meaning they experience excessive anxiety that occurs more days than not for at least six months. This can include sleep disturbance, irritability, and muscle tension. Panic attacks are also possible, but slightly different, in that they are sudden and short episodes of intense fear that trigger a severe physical reaction like accelerated heart rate, shortness of breath, and dizziness. In fact, anyone can experience a panic attack whether or not they have an anxiety disorder, and it's not always triggered by something known or specific. While not fully understood, anxiety is partially triggered by the amygdala and hypothalamus, controlling the circulation of cortisol and adrenaline in your body. Genetically, 40% of those with generalized anxiety disorder also have a relative with it, meaning these hormone levels are likely linked to your genes. Your environment can also be a factor, as certain anxiety disorders are related to traumatic childhood experiences. Varying levels of neurotransmitters like GABA, serotonin, and dopamine may also be to blame. Serotonin, which contributes to feelings of well-being and happiness, works by moving from neuron to neuron in your brain through a gap called the synapse. Any unused serotonin returns to the original neuron through a special transporter. But for those with something like OCD, a type of anxiety disorder, it has been suggested that a mutation in these transporters creates a higher volume of returned serotonin before it's had a chance to move to the receiving neuron, resulting in a decreased amount in the synapse, ultimately affecting your emotions. This is why medications like selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors are often used in these anxiety cases to prevent the serotonin from returning to its original neuron. Many anxiety disorders also show an overactive amygdala and periaqueductal gray area, which can have negative repercussions not just on the brain, but on our bodies. In a study of nearly 300 people over five years, those who had overactive amygdalas had higher incidence of heart disease too, as it triggers an increased production of white blood cells in the bone marrow, leading to an inflammatory response, which contributes to increased buildup of fatty deposits in the artery. If you have a phobia, that's considered an anxiety disorder too. But since many fears can help us survive, like the fear of spiders or heights, it's been suggested that they may be imprinted on our DNA and pass on. When mice are shocked with electricity after being exposed to the smell of fruits, they quickly learn to fear that smell. But more amazing is that the future generations of mice also fear the fruit smells, even though they've never been exposed to the shock. It turns out that electrical shock led to overexpression in certain odor receptors, making the next generation more sensitive to certain smells, almost as though they were switched on. And these switches may be related to some phobias. When it comes to treatment, cognitive behavioral therapy helps identify certain thoughts that lead to the feelings influencing your behavior, and aims to change those initial thoughts to combat anxiety disorders. On the other hand, medications such as SSRIs and SNRIs are often used to prevent reuptake of serotonin or norepinephrine, but can result in many side effects and often increase tolerance with prolonged use. Benzodiazepines are also used to help induce sleep and promote muscle relaxation, but are also linked to dementia in older populations. Needless to say, the neurochemical basis of anxiety is extremely complicated, and it's not useful to tell somebody to just calm down or get over it. So we decided to make a second video breaking down what we do to combat anxiety. Okay, so that's kind of a summary. They talk about the anxiety disorders, what can cause them, right? So those are the uh, main things there. Um, so examples of anxiety disorders, does anybody want to throw out one of them or just call people? Any examples you guys read about there? Okay, I'm going to call. Uh, Noel. Noel, sorry. What do you think? Give me an example of an anxiety disorder that you saw. Okay. Yeah. Uh, give me one of the anxiety disorders you just talked about. Social anxiety. Social anxiety? Um, fear of being 
public? Right, so people with social anxiety, uh, they don't want to be around all other people. So a lot of times they'll stay at home and they'll never be. Okay, because they don't want to be outside with other people. They're, they're fearful of that. Okay, so there's several. Just kind of know in general what those are. You have them in your notes, but you know they're all related, right? They're all part of the anxiety. All right, the other ones are the mood disorders, and mood disorders are kind of on the opposite end. Anxiety disorders, you're, you're kind of fearful of things, you have a lot of worry. Uh, mood disorders, you're kind of in a low mood state, so they, they affect how you feel. About 10% of people 18 or over suffer from them. So you know, the most common one is depression. And uh, so the first one here is major depression, it's about 8% of the population. Now, let me um, highlight the things about depression is like, Sometimes you may be sad over things, maybe last a couple of weeks or something, then it kind of goes away. People with depression, it just kind of stays there. It doesn't ever go away. So you have low, you have low mood, low state, um, not a lot of energy, you may want to sleep all the time, you're really sad, um, hopeless, right? That lasts for a long period of time. Once again, this can be disabling to people. Um, either you have a big appetite or no appetite at all. Uh, you're not really motivated to do things. So a lot of people who are depressed, they, they really suffer from it, right? Because uh, they don't want to get up there. You don't want to do things that kind of not fun anymore, that's when you're depressed. So depression can be a problem because we highlighted that a certain percentage of people who are depressed it increases the risk of self. Seasonal affective disorder. Uh, some people will, because of the winter, they're not exposed to sunlight. Uh, we do get pretty good weather here. People are have sun, but like let's say you're in a cold, dark place in the winter where you're not really getting enough sun, you may become depressed in the winter. And then during the spring and summer, when you get back outside again, you feel fine. That can happen seasonally, so that's kind of common in people, especially in colder climates where it's dark. And you, you have to get stuck inside, like. You know, here we go outside, but like in the Midwest, it's like that. There's like crazy snowstorms and stuff, so you never get to really be outside for very long. So those are the major uh, mood disorders. So what causes these? So first off, um, you can inherit these from your parents. So be aware uh, of your parents. You know, if your parents have any mental illness, if they have any anxiety, depression, any of that stuff. You couldn't um, inherit that from your parents. So be aware of that. So you might want to know that. Uh, hormonal differences that change your life. Things you inherited, I mentioned that, life events and traumas. So things that happened to you, maybe traumatic events, uh, abuse, neglect, sexual abuse, things like that. Um, you know, if you saw traumatic events, things like that, and then the events of PTSD or whatever, that can come back and get you, right? So those things can, so events can happen, uh, you can inherit it, change your brain chemistry, that kind of stuff. So once again, the main point is, guys, this can affect anybody, any age, gender, ethnicity, background, um, people are prone to it at certain times of their life, but certain things can cause it, right? You might be more prone to it with a, a parent who has it, so your brain doesn't work a certain way. Um, but there are ways to, once again, um, improve it or make it better. So, so number uh, one of the most common mood disorders. So let me, see, let me ask somebody here. Um, give me an example of one. Uh, Leonardo, what do you think? Uh, major depression. So what's major depression? So like a low motor state for a long period of time, right? Um, the definition was back here, right? Uh, major depression. So it's like you're depressed, you're, you're, you're not functioning for a long period of time. Uh, what's another one you see about this male? Uh, I said the bipolar disorder where you could have a switch from a very high mood to talking really fast and all that to a very depressed and low mood where you could uh, depend on such a certain small little aspects. Yeah, so you go from manic states to depressive states, or some people stay in one or the other. Okay, so they have like a lot of really energy and high thought when they would be depressed. So this, they swing back and forth. It's called bipolar or manic depressive. Okay. So what causes it? Give me an example of the cause. Let's see. Uh, do, what's the cause of depressive disorders? What do you think? Uh, do. 
Dude, what causes depression? What is the cause of depression? There's, there's like four or five things we talk about. You know? Well, where, where would you, why would you get depression? Could you be, could you get, you inherited from your parents? Right? What were you saying? Anyone? Go ahead. Yeah, tra traumatic events, life events, things that like uh, abuse, trauma, right, um, can cause it. So those, those things like, let's say you're neglected or abused, you can have that, that depression come out later on because it's a traumatic event. Also can cause PTSD. Okay. Okay, so things like that. It can be biology, right, you can inherit it, or you can, things can happen to you in your life that can cause depression, like abuse and things like that, right? So. All right, uh, other psychological disorders are um, things like personality disorders, schizophrenia, learning disabilities. So let's get into personality disorders. So there's there's several of them, and I'm not going to get into the details on them, but they're just, uh, they say, so what they're saying here is deviates markedly from an individual's culture, pervasive, and flexible. People with personality disorders are basically difficult to get along with, right? They struggle in relationships, they're, they're um, self serving a lot of times, or they're very difficult to kind of. So they have problems with other people. Um, the most common one you probably heard of, this is very common in social media, uh, narcissism, right? That that person is a narcissist. Well, when they say that, they're saying they have narcissistic personality disorder. Now, not everybody has that, you have to be diagnosed with it. So they may say, well, they act like a narcissist, but maybe they're not really a narcissist, right? So there's a personality disorder associated with it. There's a couple others. But once again, uh, these can be caused by like childhood or trauma or events where this person developed this kind of response in order to deal with it. And then they carry that into the relationship. So a lot of them need to go through a lot of therapy to try to fix this. So those are personality disorders, right? Schizophrenia is a little bit different in that people with schizophrenia tend to hear or see things, like hallucinations. And it's your brain malfunction, right? Um, it can be caused by a couple of things, brain damage. Um, comes on, it's also genetic. The other thing is uh, it's been associated with heavy drug use. So people who use a lot of strong drugs, like you smoke a lot of strong marijuana and stuff like that, when you're young, it actually alters your brain. So that's one of the dangers when you get drugs is um, resultant in mental illness. So a lot, a lot of times you end up with having mental issues if you use a lot of drugs because it can change your brain chemistry. Okay? So that's uh, schizophrenia. And then there's learning disabilities. Um, probably the most common are ADD and ADHD. And that um, some people in, in school really, this is pretty common actually, they really have an inability to focus on things and they struggle in things like schoolwork. Um, ADD is kind of the inability to focus, ADHD is that, but also hyperactivity where you're always moving around. You'll see the young boys typically where they're like, they can't sit still, they can't sit at the desk, they're always talking, they're always, you know, so they, they have that ADD, ADHD, and it can be an issue for schools and stuff like that. Um, so there are treatments for that. Dyslexia are people who see words and letters and stuff, they're mixed up. So it's hard for them to read and write. And then people with a, who have autism uh, disorder, there's a development disorder, there's a spectrum. Some people have mild autism to severe. Um, sometimes they have, um, they focus, hyper-focus on things. Sometimes environmental stimuli, or they over react to it. It's hard uh, for them to pick up on social or emotional cues sometimes with other people. So the interaction with other people could be limited. So they have a various uh, set of signs. And once again, that's a developmental disorder. Something sometimes they're born with or they develop as a child. Okay? And that can be caused by various things as well. So just make sure you're aware of those. Uh, once again, these questions are out there just for you to, uh, it's just kind of for you. And, uh, you know, um, I'm going to ask you general questions about them, but those are the things that All right, so heads up, uh, personality test once again is most of you are done, whether it's a third of you or not. That's due Thursday, so get that done first. Uh, today I do have a new assignment for you. Um, you'll be starting this number five, and I think, I don't think any of you all, maybe one or two of you are my other class. So if you, if you already have an account, you're just gonna go to number five and put the code in. But most of you need to go to this link here, and then put the code in for the class. And that'll register you for the class. And when you, when you register, you're gonna see a bunch of courses in there. We're going to go look at this one. So after you register, look for this one, Understanding Mental Wellness. Um, this will take a couple, two, three days. It's uh, about a period and a half. It's a 20-point assignment. There's six modules. 
So get each module, when you finish, you have a little quiz. Finish the quiz at 70% or higher to get credit. So it'll tell you, it'll turn green. So I think it's like seven out of 10. You can just retake it until you get 70%. So go through each module, get 70%, and then just finish the modules for credit. Okay, this is um, a lot about what we're talking about here. Um, and most of it's just like, oh, identifying issues and then trying to support people and then reaching out for help if you need problems. So by the way, we have a lot of resources here at school, so if you think you might be struggling or someone you know is, just encourage you to, to reach out and, and, and talk to a counselor or something, and it, and it helps. So if you get treatment and you talk to somebody, you can get through your issues, right? There's a lot of people who have recovered from this stuff. So once again, if you're having issues, please reach out and get help with that, okay? Um, okay, so register that account, finish up personality test. Any questions on that? Oh, so if I, please, if I mention your name, please turn in your uh, permission slips, okay, for your, um, your whole West College class. Looks like everybody did the application, but not everybody has permission slips on, okay? Classes, you have to scroll down and look for 
but for understanding mental wellness. There's like six or seven classes. <clears throat> Scroll down. Look for this one. Okay. If you're going to see a bunch of classes, you have to scroll down and find this one, Understanding Mental Wellness. Don't, don't, do the, don't do the other ones, you can't do that right now. Create a username and password that you'll remember. You'll, you'll be using this for several lessons, so uh, try to remember the login. I could reset it.
days. If you need to bring your permission slips so with you, so get those done. First day of the personality question would be so please get those done as well.
there's a competition, there's a winner and a loser. Don't throw bags in your office. Try to get them back next time. Have a good day, everyone. Bye, students.
two Raider fans out there. I won't, I won't say names, but two Raider fans. I couldn't even get in my classroom door, and they were already like, just so much trash talk going on already. I wonder who they were. Evelyn? Uh huh, what? Oh. Okay. Yeah. It was so, it was, it was hurtful, it was painful. I got, did I cry when you? No. Uh, I was just asking if you needed tissues. Yeah, exactly. I was just trying to get yeah. support. It's, it's it's support by like handing me tissues to wipe yeah. all my tears? Oh my yeah. gosh. So what I had to deal with all day. Right. Girl, what do you mean all day? Miss Reynolds was even like, do you need a minute to go cry in her car? And I was like, yeah. You said you went to go get water. No, this, this, that was now, like second period I'm talking about. You probably weren't here yet, but there's... <laughs> Sorry, Molly. <laughs> Two assignments, guys.
you're all done? Amber, you're done?
Amber, are you done? Both of them? Uh, you were so wide awake in the conversation with your sister face off. You were like making fun of me when I said, girl. I think it's early tomorrow. Huh? Tomorrow? tomorrow?
students left, just let you guys know. So finish the nuts of Simon. And then we're gonna get stopping point, stop and clean up. Thank you. 